Hey everyone, how are we going? Good, good to be with you today and what an excitement uh, around this being our last uh, Sunday in here but also the gratefulness and the thankfulness to God for all that he's been able to provide for us uh, as we head back into uh, the auditorium uh, next week as well. So just want to echo Michelle's thanks uh, to the team. We'll do some more uh, thankfulness uh, around that next week. Well, I trust God has been uh, speaking uh, deep into your heart and also uh, forming your life as we've been uh, engaging and sitting uh, in the book of uh, Galatians over these last uh, four weeks. Uh, there's been much to unpack and there's been a lot to consider and think about in terms of applying into our own faith walk. Some of what Paul was saying to the churches in Galatia uh, all those years ago and then what does that mean uh, for us today? Uh, the central thesis for, for Paul is that we are saved by grace through faith, uh, that our, our, our gift is of salvation is uh, from God. It's something that he initiated out of his love for us and he, he calls us into a relationship with him uh, through what Jesus uh, did on the cross. He argues with the church uh, here in <clears throat> the Galatian church that there is no other gospel. There's no dis different gospel. He was talking into a context where he was saying, do you know what? You can't follow the law in a way that's going to ensure your salvation. It's not about that. Central to our faith is Jesus, the person and the work of Jesus and what he did on the cross. And firstly and most importantly, our identity and our faith formation needs to be in Jesus. And he was really emphasizing that into the church uh, in Galatians. He talked about the law had its place, but we're not saved by the law. Uh, Jesus is central to our salvation and faith formation. And, and maybe the key verse in Galatians is Galatians 2, verse 20, where it says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And he's emphasizing, what does it look like? What does it mean to live with Jesus in us? That's essentially what he's trying to get at. And there's kind of two main uh, reasons that he was sort of pushing into this in this book of Galatians. And the one, one he was trying to unpack, and I think he did a really good job of trying to wrestle to the ground, who are the true people of God? That's what he's trying to say. Who are the true people of God? Is it the, the, the people who follow the law or is it the people who follow uh, the Messiah? He was, trying to, he was trying to work that through. And we, and we looked at that a few weeks ago that as Jesus people, we have Jesus in us. We belong to Jesus and he's central to our faith. So Paul was clearing that one up. And the second uh, thing that he was really pressing into in this letter is if we know who the true people of God are, how should they govern their lives? So, so for us to ask that question, well, if we are Jesus people, then how should we live? Uh, do we live by the law or, or do we live by the spirit of God? Uh, what, what is it? What, what, are the, what is the key and the most important uh, voice and what do we listen to most? And Paul's heart, and we were looking at this last week, and if you haven't engaged in Roger's message last week, I encourage you to, because he started off this conversation around freedom, and then we push more into this today, that what Paul is saying, well, how do Jesus' people govern their lives? Well, they're led by the Spirit, they love God, they love people, and they live in the freedom that God has given. And it's really important that we understand that. So this topic of freedom is where we find ourselves today uh, as we begin in chapter 5. And Paul begins uh, with, a, in many ways, a thesis statement uh, around freedom, and then he unpacks what it means to live free lives. Uh, so in Galatians 5, 1 to 6, it says this, it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man and every person uh, who lets themselves be circumcised that they are obliged to obey the whole law. You are, uh, you are trying to be justified by the law and have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. 
For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. In verse 6, For in Christ neither circumcision or uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressed itself through love. So what Paul is doing here in these first uh, six verses is he's, he's bringing this thesis statement which in many ways is pushing into this topic of freedom. And this is a, a move in his thinking that will then influence the rest of the letter. So what he does is he's talking about freedom and, and, his, and his big statement here is in verse 1, and that is, if Christ has set you free, then live in freedom. That's his big statement. If Christ has, let you, if Christ has set you free, then live in the freedom. And then he unpacks through chapter 5 and into chapter 6 what a free life is looks like he's re-emphasizing here in these six verses that following the law and he's using this example of circumcision again that's weaved its way all the way through the letter and it's this hot topic of the day and remember the council of uh, jerusalem that happened a year after he wrote this letter where they cleared up uh this uh this kind of topic around do we follow the law or do we follow jesus and and how do we actually live in that sort of way and what he says he says if you follow the law then then christ is of no worth to you how can Christ be of any value to you if you're going to live that way? And if you're going to follow the law, then obey the whole thing. How, how, in, how does Christ actually speak into your circumstance? Because we are justified by Jesus' work on the cross. Remember, it's Jesus that makes us acceptable to God the Father through his work on the cross. Not anything that we have done or can do into the future. Our salvation is a gift from God. Therefore, if Christ has set you free, live in freedom. That's what he's saying here. And actually, this theme of freedom uh, is actually weaved its way in and through the letter. Uh, you know, in chapter 3 and chapter 5, Paul states that our relationship with God brings freedom into our world because we're no longer bound under the law. Uh, in each of the, the first five chapters, Paul argues that we have freedom as a result of Jesus' death and that he has redeemed us through his sacrifice. And in chapter 2 and chapter 4 again, he talks about that true freedom is lived out in our relationships with other people. So this theme of freedom, it kind of works its way through the letter. But when Paul talks about uh, freedom, he's not saying you can kind of just do whatever you want. He, he's not just saying just, just do whatever you want. Just go on a self-discovery of yourself and of your life and of your faith and just kind of, you know, eat, pray, love your way through the world until you find yourself and you find, you know, what it means to be yourself. He's not talking about a self-fulfilling inward, you know, approach to that at all. He's not also talking about some form of, you know, uh, expression of faith where, where there isn't any boundaries or it's like this rudderless, you know, approach to your life and faith. And you just say, well, I just kind of do whatever I want and I'm just living in the freedom and that's all good. He's not, he's not talking about that. Rather, he's talking about freedom in Christ being that we are incorporated into the life of God. Just consider what that means, that we are incorporated into the life of God, which he mediates to us through Christ, and we get to enjoy being led by the Spirit of God. Like That is so rich and deep to think about that the God of the heavens and the earth would invite us that we would be incorporated into his life. Wow that we would get to share life with God through the person of Jesus Christ, enjoyed by the Spirit. Now, theologian Scott McKnight puts it this way. He says, For Paul, freedom is at the very heart of the gospel. God sets us free through Christ and in the Spirit so that we can love God and love others. This is really important, church family, that we understand this. I'm going to read this again. For Paul, freedom is at the very heart of the gospel. God sets us free. I want you to think of your own name now. I'm going to read that again. I want you to put your name in there. God sets Mike free through Christ and in the Spirit so that I can love God and love others. This is the sort of freedom that Paul is talking to about the church in Galatia here that are bound up and caught up in what it means to follow the law and should we do this or should we do that and Paul's just cutting through and saying this is the free life that Jesus has got for you through his work on the cross and this is emphasized in verses five and six where Paul says you know uh, for through the spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope 
For in Christ, neither circumcision or uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. So Paul gives us a clue here. He says, freedom in life is found when we're expressing our faith in love. Freedom is found when we express our faith in love. I wonder if there's any people in your world that when you spend time with them, they're just the sort of people that uh, just kind of fill your cup. And they're the sort of people that they live uh, a life following Jesus that when you spend time with them, you're inspired to want to follow him more. I wonder if you've got people like that in in your life. Uh, uh, Michelle and I have a a couple in Melbourne uh, that we're still uh, really close with and we still see uh, uh, quite a lot. And they're a couple like that for us. And when I... Uh, and when we spend time with them, they're the sort of couple that they just have this quiet confidence about who they are in Jesus and, and, and the way that they live their lives. They, they live this freedom. Um, uh, the, the, the wife, she's in um, healthcare and the husband is in insurance. They just sort of, you know, from the outside, probably like they're just getting on with life, you know, just uh, in any other way. But when you, we spend time with them and realize that the freedom that they have in God and how they've orientated their lives around the things of God to, to live out that freedom, the way that they genuinely um, express their faith through love, how they invite their neighbors in so that they can have conversations and talk about Jesus. Uh, how they uh, spend their resources on doing mission work overseas, Uh, how they're thinking about the next kind of 10 to 15 years of their lives and what that means for them in terms of how they serve the kingdom of God and and really, you know, give their best into into serving what God's asked of them. Uh, They just live with this quiet confidence, which is a freedom in Christ, which knows that that God's got all that they need and they can express uh, their love to others and that's how they live their faith. It inspires me when I spend time with them and I leave time with them wanting to follow Jesus more and more and when I think about what does it look like to live free lives what does it look like to live out your freedom in Christ I I think of this couple I wonder who is like that in your life I wonder who you are in that same way to someone else so let me ask you are you experiencing this freedom Is it real in your life? Is it expressed through your relationship with God and others? Because Paul carries on this theme of freedom, faith and love in verses 13 and 16. He says this, he says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. So do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Verse 16, so I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So Paul is linking his thinking here in verses 13 to 16 back into verse 6 where he's just talked about faith expressing itself uh, through love. And he's saying how we live out our freedom in Christ is very important. Uh, This freedom... Uh, isn't actually to build ourselves up. Uh, This freedom that we have in Christ isn't to build us up, but rather it's to serve the other. It's actually looking to serve and love the other. In humility, looking to the needs of others and loving them, being led by the Holy Spirit. And I think we need to acknowledge that we live in a society that is largely built around us and building us up. We, we live in a society, whether you know it consciously and actively push back against some of what it, it, it is, or, or we just sort of are swimming in the, in the stream of culture, our society and our culture pretty much now has built in such a way that puts us at the center. You're at the center of, of, of your world. And, and it's, in some ways, it's, it's really, it, it's tricky, you know, when you think about it, when you know, Paul's talking here about actually to live out your freedom is to not build yourself up, but to serve others. Our society in which we live in today would say, well, if you need to get ahead, you put yourself where you need to be. You know, put yourself at the center, you make it happen, you get it done. Uh, you know, products and goods and services. Um, you know, these companies have got very, very good at working out what you like and trying to sell you something. Why? Because you're at the center. Because you hold the strings to the resources in your world. So it's it's... A challenge in a way for us to hold up this cultural mirror and actually say okay where are and where am I really at 
in living out freedom in Christ. Because living out freedom in Christ, Paul would say here, isn't to build ourselves up, but is actually to serve others humbly in love. Uh, and our society would say, you're at the centre. Uh, you, you, you experience your freedom through status and resources. Um, you, you can sort it out. You can control it. You've got the means. You've got the opportunity. You know, you've got the freedom. You know, just go out there and get it done. But that's actually something that we need to be really aware of. Firstly, we need to acknowledge that that's an aspect of our culture, uh, you know, hyper-individualism, consumerism at the core. We need, to, we need to be aware of that and, and actually say, okay, well then how do I live out my faith in and through that? What does that actually mean? Because it'd be very easy for us to be sucked into this way of thinking. And Paul uh, says in verse uh, 13 here, he says that, that this way, you know, kind of, will help us indulge in in the flesh it will help us you know indulge in this sort of flesh behavior which is basically making life all about me when god didn't intend for it to be that way because life in the kingdom of god is different it's actually not about what we get it's more about what we can give which is important it's this kind of upside down inside out you know it's a paradox in many ways and this is what life is like in god's economy not what we can get but actually what we can give. And what Paul is teaching here is he's saying, hey, church in Galatia, and he's saying to us today, Clovey Church, don't fool yourselves in in seeking meaning and purpose from experiencing things that indulge us in the flesh. Rather, we experience freedom as we serve others with humility and in love being led by the Holy Spirit. That is where freedom is found. There's an eternal and a purposeful way for us to experience freedom rather than just the instant uh, gratification of uh, our time right now. So experiencing God's freedom is actually lived by serving and loving others, being led by the Holy Spirit. And the Greek word that uh, Paul is using here for love in verse 6 and also verse 13 and 14 is agape. And you might have heard uh, before of agape love. And agape love is a divine love, a a love that is unselfish, self-giving. It's an outgoing love. It comes from us to another, not one that we receive, and it's directed towards others. Agape love is actually the highest form of love. And it's the love that God has given to humanity by sending his son, Jesus, to earth. You know, as as John says in John 3.16, a very, very famous verse, you you know, you see it on the Olympics even when they kind of hold up the, the banners in the crowd, you know, and where, where John talked about um, it's for God's love, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That is agape love, that God would give his son for humanity, to be in relationship, to experience freedom and relationship with him. And, and Paul states that all of the law is fulfilled. So he's pushing back in to this, to this community that is a little bit hung up on, do we live out the law? And what do we do about that? He's saying, well, actually, the truth be told, all of the law, all of it, can hang on this one command, which is an agape love of loving your neighbor as yourself. And Paul is directly quoting from Leviticus. And 19, where Jesus, also in Matthew 22, quoted from the same law when asked what was the greatest commandment. And you might remember he said, you love the Lord God with all your heart, all your strength, all your mind, all your soul. And second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. And what Paul is saying here is he's saying uh, freedom is experienced through service in love as we're led by the Holy Spirit. And this posture of agape love and service is what we see in the person of Jesus. When you consider uh, how Jesus lived and what he valued and how he approached his life and ministry, it was one of love and service. He set the example of how to live through his actions and he taught his uh, followers the importance of loving and serving others. This is a great example in Mark. And with the team uh, that we were at Trinity Baptist last week, I preached from Mark 9, just in their series where they're up to. And uh, in Mark 8 to Mark 10, Jesus three times, uh, uh, he talks about his death. 
his upcoming death. And three times uh, the disciples don't get it and they argue about status and they argue about being the greatest or they argue about sitting at his right hand or that Peter just doesn't like it. He says, you know, that's not going to be, ha- that's not going to happen, Jesus. That's, that's definitely not the way you're going to die. And three times then Jesus talks to them about the importance of being a servant. They're called the passion predictions as Jesus starts to push his way towards the cross in the Gospel of Mark. And in Mark 8.35, Jesus says, For whoever whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me in the Gospel will save it. Mark 9.35, he says, Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and he said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. And then the crescendo in Mark 10.43-45, he says, Whoever wants to become great, among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many so jesus talked about the importance of serving others actually life in the kingdom of god following jesus is a life that responds to the agape love of god and serves others and loves others and paul's picking up on that in this uh, part of the, 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 the um, letter here. So let me ask you, are we living like this? Are we living like people who are putting the other first? Are we living our day-to-day lives in such a way that we experience the freedom of Christ because we are loving and we are serving the other? Or do we get caught in putting ourselves in the middle of the story because that's what our culture would just naturally do and it'd be really easy to do that and do we need to hold up the mirror and say i'm not actually at the center of this conversation not at the center i actually i experience freedom through serving and through loving others and he goes on to say in verse 16 uh, about this conversation around freedom he says so i say walk by the spirit And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So we experience God's freedom through uh, love and service, but also by being led by the Spirit. In many ways, that's how it's activated. It it needs to find its way into our daily living, right? Uh, Otherwise, it's just going to sit as an idea. But how, how do we actually live out our faith? Well, we walk with the Spirit. And this, this, this is a verb, this is a doing word, this is a, as we go in life, we are led by the Spirit. As you are at work, as you are at home, as, as you go to the shops, uh, as, as you go about your everyday, ordinary life, we are walking with the Spirit. And we don't indulge in those fleshy desires, we don't put ourselves in the centre, uh, we don't pop those things into our world that bring meaning and purpose to us, that we know aren't really the things that speak to the freedom in our lives we push back on some of that we deal with some of that hard work maybe around not having jesus at the center and we invite him in we push away some of those fleshy uh you know instant gratification or 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 thoughts or attitudes or behaviors that that are just there that are speaking to us in a different way and we we say no 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 we're going to walk by the spirit We're going to walk into the things of God because that's how we actually genuinely experience the freedom that Paul is talking about here. I remember when I first um, became a youth pastor back in 2005, I had a uh, relationship with the youth pastor at the time who was outgoing at the church. And uh, Michelle and I were living in London. We were coming back um, to be chaplain at King's and youth pastor at uh, Golden Grove Baptist Church back then. And uh, I remember talking to the outgoing youth pastor, a friend of ours, and he was heading back to Sydney for work, and, and I said, oh, like, I'm pretty new to this. I've been a teacher. I'm coming into this youth pastor's kind of chaplain thing. Have you got any advice? Like, what, what would you, what do I need to know? And, and he said, my only bit of advice, Mike, is that you stay close to Jesus. That's my only bit of advice. And that was like 18 years ago. Still one of the best bits of advice I've got. <laughs> stay close to Jesus. And when I think about what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? What does it mean to not indulge in uh, flesh behaviours, but experience God's freedom through serving and loving others with a posture of humility, which is all the things that Paul's talking about here? I think we stay close to Jesus. 
we cultivate that daily relationship. The way we walk in the Spirit is to have a daily, active, life-giving relationship with Jesus. So we're in the Word, we're in prayer. We have people around us that, that ask hard questions that help us grow and not just let us slide. Um, we, we, we genuinely engage in the things of God in a daily way when we're up for it and when we're not. And we're honest. And, and we talk about the areas where we're struggling, but we also talk about the areas where we're going really well. And we thank God for that. And we just keep walking. We stay in step and we walk. We don't give up. And it doesn't matter what age or what stage we find ourselves in, we just keep moving forward because we're walking not in our strength, but we're walking in the things of God and we're walking by the Spirit. So this idea of being led by the Spirit and living in the Spirit, I wanted to talk a lot more about this, but I can't because I've run out of my verses. Next week, Kelly Bunyan in the New Auditorium, who, by the way, was the first person to preach the first sermon in COVID when we went online in the auditorium, will now take on the message as we go back into the auditorium. So we'll give her a big cheer next week. She's going to talk more about this because this is where she, she'll bring it home. And she'll talk more about what it means to be led by the Spirit and to live in the Spirit. And what does that actually mean in our lives? Because this is where, this is where Paul takes us as he finishes uh, this letter. And if you ever wondered, is the Bible relevant to us today? Wow. Hasn't this letter just spoken into our hearts? Hasn't it uh, encouraged us and challenged us in how we live as Jesus people today? I hope it has for you. And it's not lost on me that Paul has been arguing and quite pointedly, with more exclamation marks than in, many, in any other letter that he's written. He's been on the front foot just pushing his agenda around the centrality of Jesus, that we're saved by grace through faith. And then he develops his thinking into freedom and, and how it's expressed by loving and serving others, being led by the Holy Spirit. Do you know what Paul is essentially saying? He's saying, wake up, activate your faith, live out your faith. Now's the time. And I think he'd want to say that to us as much as he's saying to the church in Galatia all those years ago. So I trust that the Holy Spirit is speaking into your heart. I trust that the Holy Spirit is uh, leading you into the truth of Jesus about what it means to live out this message as we experience God's freedom through loving others and serving others with humility being led by the Spirit. So I want you to take a quick audit. I want you to just have a moment of honesty uh, before uh, God and uh, now. And I want you to think back on your week or your month, just something that makes sense to you. And uh, I want you to ask this question. Uh, how are you and when have you been serving others humbly in love? When is it that you look to the needs of others and not that people would meet your needs when when has that been true for you where and to whom is the holy spirit leading you to love and to serve others who are the people picture them now they could be workmates they could be people in your street they could be people in the ministry in which you serve who are the people that the holy spirit is leading you to love and to serve And lastly, have you created margin in your life for this to be the case? Is there, is there time? Do you have time in your day to be interrupted? Do you, have your, do you have time in your day to say yes when the Holy Spirit interrupts you as you walk with Him? And He says, I've got this person for you to love today. I've got this person for you to serve today. Do you have time to do that? Just consider that now. And as you c consider that, I just want to share with you something that happened here this week. On uh, Monday morning, I came into work, as I normally do, and, and in the back corner, there was a, a little setup. I haven't seen a little setup before of, 
of a, a van and a car and a little tent and then there was a shower and a toilet there as well. I was like, oh, this is, this is a big setup. What's happening here? And I wandered over and I said hello and I met a homeless man and his friend who uh, was, known, uh, was known to us uh, as, a, as a church uh, through a family of the church and, and had a bit of a chat and, and, and had a bit of a talk and, and asked, oh, what's going on? You know, what's happening? You know, can we help you in any way? And, and uh, had a really good conversation and were able to help him uh, and his friend with a shower and pathway were able to help with some food and, and um, had a really good chat about church and a bit of his upbringing and, and, uh, and, and, and a little bit about who he was and things like that. And, and then the next day I uh, popped in again and said, oh, you going okay? You know, he said, you know, you can stay for a few days, that's fine. Police might move you on, but, you know, y- you know we, we want to be welcome to you. And, and he said, yeah, no problems, that's fine. And, and he said, can I help? Yeah, and I said, oh, you'd like to help? And he goes, yeah, I'd really like to um, help around the place as well. And, well, he came on the right day because David George and the Tuesday crew <laughs> have, um, trust me, like, you know, God loves you, but David George has a plan for your life, that sort of thing, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and uh, I'm introducing him to David and a couple of the guys, and, and, uh, and, and, he, and he just got around these guys, and, and before you know it, he's mowing some lawns and doing some gardening and meeting with the guys and having a bit of a chat and and it was just a beautiful interaction that we saw over the next few days and and he came to me so we're going to move on to this next place but thanks so much for having me and he was really um, blessed by that and I thought to myself you know isn't it great as I was putting this message together for this week as well isn't it great that we get this opportunity to experience God's freedom that was a that was a bit of a buzz for me and for us as a church that we got to serve someone in our community and love someone in our community. But how great is that as we engage in that and as we do that, uh, he wanted to serve as well. He wanted to join in. That's actually a really common story, what we see at Pathway as well, which is great. People who are blessed by the ministry of Pathway often want to give and serve back into the ministry of Pathway. And that kind of feels right, doesn't it? Because we're all created in the image of God uh, and God does that work in us. Uh, But we experience God's freedom as we love and as we serve as we walk by the spirit and we give time in our days to attend to the things that god is doing now that's an example of what happened here in this last week what would it look like in your life as you go from here today and you go into the rest of your sunday and then tomorrow we get dispersed into hundreds and hundreds of locations around our city what does it look like what does it look like to experience God's freedom through loving and serving others, being led by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Jesus, we want to thank you that you have set us free. We want to thank you for your work on the cross that has set us free. And we want to live in your freedom. I invite us all to stand now. Let's stand. Just want I want us to come before the Lord. We come before you now, Lord. I encourage you, if you feel comfortable, just to surrender yourself afresh. If you've experienced the freedom of Christ in your life, if you are saved by grace, then just come before the Lord now, humbly and openly, as a posture of surrender, and say, Jesus, I thank you that I am free because of what you've done on the cross. I thank you for that agape love, which is real in my life and asking now, how, Lord, can I experience more of your freedom as I love and serve others, being led by your Spirit? And let Him speak into your heart. Let Him tell you today that, that you can overcome in your personal situation and circumstances to serve the other, that people do love and care for you, but you can love and care for others. Let Him speak into your heart today. That person that you might think is hard to love is the person that God is asking you to serve. So make a commitment in your heart now to love and to serve them because that is living out the freedom of Christ. Ask the Lord to lift your eyes to the future and what does it mean to experience God's freedom as you serve and love another? It might be here in Adelaide, South Australia. It might be that God is stirring your heart to be a missionary overseas. But that is experiencing God's freedom as we are obedient to the things of God. 
It might be that your life stage is changing. It might be that you feel like that you don't have anything else to give. Well, that is not true because Christ has set you free to live in your freedom and serve and love the people he's put in your world. So Jesus, we thank you for the example that you set around being a servant. It was an active love for humanity. Grow and develop that in us and let us live and experience your freedom. Thank you, Jesus.